Hello everyone, so as you all know, there was a V12 public test a couple days ago, and I was in and I was able to play about 8 hours straight of the public test. So in this video, we're just going to be showcasing all of the new goodies. We'll go into more depth in another video about my first impressions of the changes, you know, the new suppression mechanics, the new spawn mechanics, and all that good stuff. Uh, but this video is purely just going to be showcasing all of the new goodies, simply because uh, we now ha I now have hands-on access to it, and we're going to be showing you all the cool things that they've added. So first off, right off the bat, as you can see here, is a whole new UI for the screen. You have a lot of customizability here, where you can toggle the spawns, toggle the fob radius and stuff like that. You can see how many build points are on certain fobs. You can see uh, the uh, view viewing the rolls or not. So usually by default they're off which means they show up as those blue circles but when you have them on it shows exactly what kit they have gl uh hat whatever um they show up as those blue icons and then you can change the uh the map cap points viewability viewability you can't change it right now because there are no cap points on jensen's range and then i have my grid uh turned up all the way but you can turn the grid all the way down if you'd like i have it all the way up because i'm a squad leader most of the time and i need to see what grid people are in um Map icon scale, you can also touch that, and then you have your legends, right? So really cool stuff. Uh, they have a lot of more information here that's accessible. It's a little overwhelming, but it's very customizable. So you can choose what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Uh, moving on next are the uh, squad leader markers, and we'll go into that. Uh, it's much easier now with a radial menu. It's not even a radial menu. It's like a directional pad, right? And there, you don't have to fumble around with certain things. You're easily able to mark certain things exactly where uh, they are, and you don't have to fumble around with like open up this menu, then that menu, then the next menu. It's very easy, up, left, or right, and then uh, you just click on what you need to mark. And there's a lot of cool things here. So uh, the f next thing I want to talk about is the fire team. So we are on. Um, firing range so we don't have people to add to the fire teams but essentially you have multiple fire teams that you can add people with you just hold click and hold down their name um i don't think we can do it here unfortunately let me try and see if we can spawn in and do it uh but essentially what you can do is add people to fire teams and what that does is it changes their number and their color uh, or excuse me just their color and uh letter over here so when they talk down below in the bottom left where squad chat would pop up right here it says their alpha alpha or bravo or charlie or delta uh, and the color so you're easily able to see who's in what fire team so really cool system here and then once you have fire team set up you can also give attack and move and uh different orders to different fire teams so you have a purple marker and an orange marker for your fire team so a lot of control there for fire teams um it gets a little messy on the map because there's a ton more icons but it's definitely a lot more uh control that you have over the squad so that's pretty much the I think that's everything regarding this UI with the deployment screen. Um, once again, you can choose where you spawn now. They're very easily highlighted with these kind of uh, outlines. So the three fob markers here you can spawn, or the three main bases, I guess. Uh, and then in loadouts, they've changed a bit. So you can all see the availability. So blue is team-wide, green is squad-wide. Because we're in the firing range, it's infinite on both. But you know, uh, for example, fire support rolls, you get three per squad, and then you get like one hat per team. So it will show up here how many are on the team, and how many are in the squad, and if you can take that role. Another thing that they have, of course, is choosing of the weapons. As you can see here, there's no multiple squad leader uh, roles. There's just the one role. So now when you want to choose if you want optic or not, or, you know, crewman, you click on this, and now you can pick if you want the optic or not. Uh, the crewman is still here, excuse me. But the regular squad leader, you can choose uh, which optic you want. So let's say, for example, um, certain classes have different weapons that they can use. For example, the standard rifleman, right? The standard rifleman has... Uh, no optic, or you can grab an optic, right? So you'll see that once we pull that out as well. So that's pretty much everything with that. Uh, the team selection screen is just much prettier now with two unit models and, uh, you know, very easy to see. Click to join and stuff like that. Uh, game mode information, map information, and a server message. So just a lot more visible information as you start the game. Makes it more accessible for new players. That's pretty much everything UI wise that I believe that they've added. Uh, a couple things that we can't really show you in the in the range but i'll show you with i guess multiplayer clips uh, in the next couple seconds is the suppression effect the new suppression effect will darken the size of your screens as you're getting shot at i think it's really nice it adds it's not too overwhelming it doesn't uh, move your cursor or anything it just makes it harder to see and uh, another couple changes that they made were to the respawns uh, there are now wave respawns on rallies and on fobs you spawn as a whole group instead of just individually great for keeping the team together keeping the squad together as you push out uh, rallies are now infinite which i don't know how i feel about that change but we'll go into that in another video uh so rallies are now infinite um you'd have unlimited spawns on the rally 
but that's also offset by the amount of ammo that you have. Once again, persistent ammo is in game. So when you respawn on a fob, you respawn or respawn on a fob or a rally and don't resupply, you respawn with the same amount of ammunition that you had when you died, uh, with a minimum of uh, I think about two mags always and two bandages, or that could be three mags depending on your kit. So a lot of cool stuff is now in game. So that's pretty much all the gameplay changes. Um, we'll go into my opinions on those changes uh, later on. Let's move on to the cool new toys. So the first thing that we're going to show off are uh, we're going to run over and show off a couple of the new vehicles that we have, right? Because uh, version 11 will add the T72 as well as the M1 Abrams. It also adds the Cornet that we'll see, SKS with a scope, the FN Fal, uh, a new, uh, I think the L22 for the Brits, the new British APC, which we'll show off, uh, a new map, Talil outskirts will which will show out uh, uh, as well and so as we're running over here uh you can see that the whole jensen's range has been reworked pretty much it's a lot cleaner now a lot nicer it looks it looks like an actual base now before it was kind of janky um but yeah it's really cool that to see that they're working on the jensen's range simply because this range for new players is an awesome new starting tool so as you can see here we have the new updated models i guess it could also show you the updated models on the strikers and on the uh, bradley so as you can see, they have like razor wire on it. Uh, certain layers have different strikers. So this striker is just the standard striker. But on Belaya, for example, there are strikers with like dark green camo. They have uh, netting on it. They have uh, backpack backpacks on it. Maybe I'll show you that model uh, in a in, in in at some point in time in this video. The Bradley, of course, looks so much nicer now with these like added on little backpacks, and it's just got more character on it. And uh, even this Abrams, right? They're not just base vehicle models. They have some, like, you know, markings on them. They look like they're, they're real vehicles. They're not just models that are placed into a game, right? They have, you know, their own unique look to them. So we'll, we'll jump in here into the Abrams, and we'll go over the Abrams stuff uh, as we as we start. So once we uh, get in the vehicle here, you can see now they've changed a couple things about the vehicles as well. Now, to start the vehicle, you have to hold down the E button. You don't just click the engine on and off, so you have to hold it on. You'll see that at the bottom right on my screen, that circle will go up. And then you can also choose what gear you're in. So holding shift while driving will lock you in said gear. So if you're going in, um, if you're going up a hill, you'll notice the end, the neutral, and the start of my, in the center of my screen will switch to a one. As soon as it switches to a one, I'll hold down the shift button and it'll lock it in one. It won't go to second gear or third gear or so on and so forth. So you now have full control over what gear you want to be, be in de depending on the terrain that you're on. And that matters because now they have added terrain resistance. So driving in mud, driving in rivers and stuff like that, that slows down your vehicle. Uh, driving on roads, of course, is going to be the fastest way to get around. So we're going to go here. As you can see, the driver of... I think most of the armored vehicles now, the APCs and the, the tanks and the armor, have smoke generators, which you can see at the bottom right side of the screen. What that does is once you click and hold, it'll release a trail of smoke behind the vehicle. So we're just going to turn the vehicle on and get this on the range. Okay, so we're on the range now, and now we're going to start showing off the assets that this vehicle has, right? The weaponry. So we're going to switch the gunner seat. As you can see, we have a nice new optic for the tank. Uh, it's got range finding on it, so it's... As we zoom in on this location right here at the bottom of the screen, you have the ranging. Uh, you have the holdovers for hitting things at certain distances. So if I was to hit this at 700, I would be right on target. If I want to hit something at, let's see, let's go to 1500. I would use the uh, the markings on the bottom right hand side and 1500 would be right here. Um, we'll fire the weapon in a second as soon as we go over the different ammo types. So first off, we have Armor Piercing Sabo. This is your main AP round, right? This is going to go through your BTR, it's going to go through your T-72s, it's going to go through Warriors if you're going up against Warriors for some random ass reason. Uh, this is going to be your main Armor Piercing round. Um, so we'll go ahead and fire this at uh, the 1500 meter mark. And connect. Uh, one thing that they have added is vehicle stability. It's really hard for me to showcase vehicle stability as a solo player in the range. But essentially, you click that on with Z, and you can see that STA on the right-hand side of the optic turns on. Turn it off, turn it on. This means while you're moving, your your uh, camera's going to be much more stable. You can also do this in the uh, the crow seat in the vehicle so that you're, you aren't attached to the uh, the main gunner's firing line. And I'll show you. Uh, that, that's very confusing to explain, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, so toggle on with Z, zoom in with Q, obviously, uh, the Abrams has three times zoom. So one, two, three, uh, and the third has the holdovers, of course. And now we're going to move on to the other, uh, kinds of things we can do here. So we have armor piercing Sabo as our main round. Remember that's AP. We now have heat. 
which is gonna be also you can also use this against armor if you'd like uh, I, I don't recommend it as you can hear when you reload the round you actually have a loader because the abrams is manually loaded you have a loader that tells you when you're ready to fire and he has a couple of different cool voiceover lines that you'll you'll experience once you get your hands on the tank but uh this is an awesome round i love the heat round so much because of the explosion it makes and we're just gonna fire this in front of us tell me that 122 millimeter heat round doesn't make a big fucking boom so we're gonna load the round again Glorious, glorious. Another thing that I'd like to mention, we'll go back to AP uh, Sabo. Is that the AP rounds, because they're Sabo rounds, you know, it's like a full metal rod. It, it bounces. It'll skip on the ground if you miss a target. Like that. I, that, like, that, tell me that isn't cool. That just, that makes, that makes me so excited. Like, hitting... When you hit a target, of course, it'll connect, but if you hit the ground or any terrain, that round will skip. And it skips pretty far. So we'll nail, uh, we'll nail this at a thousand meters here. Should be about here-ish. Yeah. Um, so those are the main two rounds that you have for the main cannon on the Abrams. We're gonna switch to your secondary, which is gonna be your, uh, 240. Coax. Right? So you got 240 with a shit ton of rounds. You don't have to reload it. You only get one magazine, but it's a lot of rounds that you have on this thing. And then you also have uh, your smoke launchers, right? Typical 40 millimeter smoke launchers for the front of the vehicle. Um, if you're getting attacked or you, you know, need to cover yourself. So that's just the main gunner seat. There are two more seats in this vehicle. You have the commander seat, which has a crows, a 50 cal crows attached to it. And this, of course, uh, once again, has that three times zoom. And then you have the top gunner seat, which is another 240 attached with a screen. So this thing has a shit ton of firepower. So going back to the stabilization for the commander seat, because the the turret is attached to the top of the uh, the tank, right? It's attached to the turret. When the gunner swings left, the commander seat will also swing left. To turn that off, you turn stabilization on once again by hitting Z. Stabilized. Now wherever you're looking, you'll you'll look that direction regardless if the gunner swings his turret left or right. So just remember that. Very important. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the Abrams. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drive it out there and blow it up. Okay, to blow up the Abrams, we're gonna be using the brand new Cornet, which is for the Russian. It's the uh, anti-tank guided missile. Uh, the cool thing about the Cornet is you fire it while crouched. So as you can see, while you're firing it, you are you are pretty much in the cover of any sandbags that you choose to place down. So we'll go in here, and this thing. These laser laser guided uh, ATGMs, they're fast. So we'll hit the Abrams in its weak spot, which is at the back of its turret. And as you can see, it's already on fire. And it should take about two ATGMs to blow this thing up. Unless I miss. Oh no, I didn't miss. Very cool stuff, right? Very cool stuff. All right, so the T-72. We'll do a quick little walk around just to show off its its beauty. You got the smoke launchers. You got that top uh, gun. Yeah, it's just, I'm speechless sometimes. Uh, these tanks just like, they sound and look amazing. All right, there's the Abrams. There's the T-72. So we'll hop in the T-72. Turn her on. Okay, so we got the T-72 on the range now. Uh, same deal with the driver's seat as with the Abrams. You only get smoke and the and the engine commands. Uh, we're gonna move, however, to the gunner seat. And there's this is when things get a little bit different. So sight's a little bit, sight picture's a little bit different. The holdover's a little bit different. You only get two times zoom, not three times zoom. 
But you still get that rangefinder, and once again, stability is activated by the Z key. You'll see that button light up now. Right? Stabilizer's on. Okay, so what kind of armament does a T-72 have? Well, it has 125 millimeter armor-piercing Sabo. So once again, this is going to be your main anti-tank round. This is 0 to 70. Right? And once again, just like the Abram Sabo round, this round will bounce if you hit terrain. Now, if you're wondering why there isn't a yell once your gun is loaded, that's because the Abrams is manually loaded and the T-72 has an auto loader. So, we'll just, we'll, we'll hit one more thing and then move on. So, this is at 1250, which will be roughly right in the middle here. Nice. Okay, what else do we have? We have a 125mm heat round. Pretty similar to the Abrams, makes a big boom. A ton of fun to watch, right? We'll just do one more of those. As you can see, there's less ammo for the heat in the uh, T-72, and there's a reason why. I'll explain that in a second. All right. The reason why you have uh, pretty much half the amount of heat rounds as a as the Abrams is because you also get fragmentation rounds. I have yet to test how much damage these do and how big the splash is, but it's cool to see fragments. As you can see, the explosion is much smaller, but I don't know if the blast radius or the damage radius is actually any larger. We have to do some testing on that. So those are just the three main cannon rounds. We still got a little more to go through. The next is a reflex guided missile, which is a laser guided ATG. So this thing is freaking fast. So we're going to aim at the 1500 meter mark and launch this thing. And you're going to see how fast this uh, guided missile whizzes. Like, it launches, it comes out pretty hot, man. It, 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 it comes out fast. I love that first firing arc, too. It's nuts. So, you get ATGMs, frag rounds, heat, Sabo. You also get um, a PKT coax on the uh, turret to engage infantry and other targets. And then you also, of course, have your 40 millimeter smoke launchers. Now, the Brad, uh, not the Bradley, the Abrams holds four players. The T-72 only holds three, the driver, gunner, and commander. So we're going to switch the commander seat. And it's pretty much just going to be an NSVT mounted on here um, with a similar crow system. All right, so uh, that's pretty much everything to showcase with the T-72. We're going to drive it out and explode it. All right, so we're actually going to blow up the T-72 uh, with the Abrams. So this will give us a better uh, view of the explosion, and we get a little tank-on-tank -tank action, right? So we're going to aim for the back of the turret. We're zeroed at like 100, so we're going to be aiming pretty low here. And we're just going to be hitting it in the turret a whole bunch of times. And there we go. Two pops. That's all it took. And she's, she's down. Now, I know there was a small bug on a couple of the live servers that we played on in V12 where the T-72 was taking a ton of rounds. And, of course, we get some nice secondaries and she cooks off her ammunition. So, really cool that they added this, the secondary effect. I think that's really immersive. You'll get out so we can hear the uh, explosions. I don't actually know if they damage you on live servers. I would imagine they would if you got too close to them. That would be like a cool feature, but I'm sure that's not one of the dev's priorities right now. So I'm trying to think. I think that's everything. Oh, no, I almost forgot. We're going to switch to the, uh, to the Russian team and show you the new RPG optic. All right, so we're back. Uh, as you can see, those tanks are out there on the map cooking off. Um, and we're going to show off the new RPG uh, 7v2 optic. Uh, this thing is awesome because... We're playing as the hat on Russia right now, and we have a reticle for both the heavy anti-tank and the light anti-tank round. So we're going to zoom in here. Uh, now, this sight might be a little difficult to read, but roughly the top cross is 100 meters-ish. Um, the second cross is 150 for, for the normal light uh, anti-tank round. But for the main anti-tank round, uh, 100 meters is going to be dead center of this huge 
uh, crossbar of the the center um, line and the and the uh, horizontal line. So as you can see right here, we're zeroed for 100 dead center. Um, if we want to hit 200, it would be this bottom line, and then you have a 1.5, which is roughly here. But there's no one point. I mean, I guess there's a 1.5 uh, target over there. But we're we're gonna shoot for uh, 200. Now this thing does have a lot of drop, but roughly at 200 meters, you want to be aiming right here, uh, and you're gonna see that arc. So we shot a little bit over, but as you can see, uh, 200 is roughly that mark. Uh, if you're shooting at 150, it's going to be roughly this mark, and then 100 is the dead center big mark. We're going to switch over to the uh, frag round, and I'll show you the holdovers for the frag round. Okay, so 100, like I said, is going to be this big cross, so we're going to fire that. And then we'll fire for something longer range. Let's uh, let's try to hit the 400. So as you can see, we take the four on the left, the top left side of the reticle, line it up here, and we should be good to go. Yeah, I think that hit it. It might have hit right in front of it. But you can see roughly the uh, the ranging for the, the new RPG site on the scope right here. Uh, once again, remember that the numbers on the top left are for the light anti-tank round, and the three numbers uh, in the dead center of the reticle are for the heavy anti-tank round. Um, I think that's it for America and Russia. One thing I will note before we go into the other weapons like the FN Foul, the SKS, um, is that one thing that they've done to all the weapons in Squad V12, which I'm so grateful for, is they've brought the weapon sights closer to your eye. The weapon iron sights are now larger. Um, the reasoning for this is because when you're looking down a sight before, uh, what Squad was doing was taking the distance from the iron sight at the front of your gun to the back of your face in game and and having that distance so it's a pretty long distance and the iron sights were pretty small but what they did not account for was the space from the monitor to your face and that's a whole extra distance right so that's a whole nother foot that you're sitting behind the iron sights these iron sights are much more practical and realistic now because now if you're sitting in your chair at your computer and you held a rifle out they would roughly be right where your monitor is right instead of adding that extra monitor length so that's why the reticles might be larger on your screen or why you're wondering why the reticles are larger. It's because uh, squad did increase the uh, size of your um, of your uh, reticle to better and more accurately uh, replicate iron sights in a video game with your monitor. So cool stuff, really cool stuff. So we're gonna switch maps here and we'll be back with the uh, Brits. So we'll show off the new APC, the new L22. And um, I think that's all they had for the Brits. Uh, and then the... Uh, the other rifleman kits for the militia okay so as you can see we are back with the uh, crewman kit as the brits uh this is an l22 which is a shorter uh, barrel version of the l85 so we're gonna go ahead and reload as you can see that barrel is much shorter uh so kind of a new weapon for the brits it was it was interesting to see i, I noticed it as soon as i jumped into the uh, crewman kit and then of course we have the new british ifv which is this MTLB looking thing with a turret on top, which is, it's actually pretty cool looking. It looks pretty funny at first, but this thing looks pretty cool. So we're going to hop in pretty standard driver seat. Um, you do, uh, you can carry, uh, am, um, it's not ammunition, excuse, excuse me. Yeah. Fob resupply ammunition in this vehicle. So you can go to a fob and drop off your ammo in this vehicle. It's kind of cool. Cause it kind of works as a lodgy in that sense. Um, but as far as like what you, what else you can use, you only have the smoke generator and then your driving capabilities as a driver. So you have an extra kind of small logy kind of, uh, capability to this vehicle. But other than that, nothing really new on the driver's seat. And then of course you just have the, uh, M2A1 browning on the top in the turret with the shield. I like this shield. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, you have side paneling as well. So that's pretty cool. And then it's just a standard M2A1. <laughs> All right. So that's this vehicle. Um, we're gonna move on to the two different versions of the Brad, uh, not the Bradley. Excuse me, the Warrior. There are two new versions of the Warrior now, and the Warrior also has a commander seat. So they did touch up on the Warriors a little bit. As you can see, the Warrior on the left has extra armor plating. I'm not actually sure how much or if this actually increases the uh, health of the vehicle. I'm sure it does. It must. Uh, but you have these extra side panelings for armor. Um, and then, of course, you have the other warrior, which has, of course, gotten one of those character upgrades, right? It looks beat up. It looks war-torn. You got the backpacks on it. Um, 
you have stuff in the uh, turret back here. You have tool toolboxes and stuff. Oh, toolboxes. Uh, so vehicles now have compartment compartmentalized damage. So you can hit ammo uh, reserves in the back of vehicles, like the tanks, or you can hit engines on vehicles. On um, pretty much every vehicle has an engine that you can hit. And when th once that en engine is damaged, it'll start smoking, and you can't go as fast as you once were able to. You have to use the vehicle repair tool, which is this nice little chest, this nice little box and uh, repair the vehicle. So as you can see, this vehicle can no longer be repaired further with handheld repair toolkit. This can't bring a vehicle back to full health. All it can do is repair broken or damaged components. Uh, you cannot just fully repair your T-72 or Abrams in the middle of a gunfight or a, a tank fight. We're going to hop in the uh, warrior and I'm just going to show you off the two, uh, or not the two, the only new thing in here, which is the commander seat. Here you go. Commander seat, you can't really do too much. Um, they added a new feature called the hunter killer feature, which is like the commander looks at something. He can tell the gunner to hit a button and the gunner's turret will swing to where the commander's looking. I haven't mastered that or even used that in game yet. And I can't really do that by myself on the Jensen's range, but apparently that is a thing now. So commander seats now have an extra purpose. They can scout more easily for your turret driver. You just see you. So let's say you wanted to point out, um, this mtlb you look at this mtlb hit space i think and then the gunner would hit e and i think it snaps the turret to the uh, mtlb um so some cool stuff and then of course you do get extra 40 millimeter smoke launchers in the in the uh in the bradley commander seat right so that's the only thing that they touched up with the brits as far as i can remember uh one cool thing that i almost forgot are the new ammo bags and we'll talk about how the ammo bags work so let me just find an ammo crate go right here so any rifleman any rifleman has ammo uh bags right here so this could be the acog rifleman the red dot rifleman or iron sight rifleman they no matter what you are as so long as you're a rifleman you have an ammo bag the ammo bag is essentially a mobile ammo crate you put this down people walk up to it they hold f and they can resupply you can also pack it back up into your bag once you're done so really cool feature especially with the persistent ammo feature this helps elongate a squad's lifetime outside of the fob so you're able to resupply without the use of a vehicle or an ammo crate however i've been playing v12 and i have noticed that you do need to hit ammo crates quite often now because your lats especially need to rearm their rockets in order to deal with enemy armor so really cool feature here uh we're gonna go off and show off a lot of the new militia weapons militia got a lot of new uh handheld rifles or, or small arms excuse me on handheld rifles i don't know what i'm saying but yeah we're gonna switch over to uh the militia and showcase that so the militia has a couple goodies. Uh, the first thing that they have is the squad leader has quite a few new toys. We're going to go to loadout here, cl uh, click on squad leader, and we're going to look at the primary weapons. First thing you see here is the FN file, brand new weapon to squad. It looks really cool. Iron sights are amazing. It sounds good, has full auto and semi-auto capabilities, and we're going to spawn here and mess around with that first. All right. All right, so we're in, as you can see. Really cool model. It's got that wood buttstock. We're going to get over to the firing range here. And we'll show this baby off. So, first things first, of course, we're going to do the semi-auto. As you can see, I love the iron sights on the foul. Uh, in, in Sandstorm, in Citrus Sandstorm, and other games, I just love the iron sights on the foul. They just are so clean, uh, especially compared to, like, the G3 or some of the other most ridiculous guns. This thing is actually amazing. <laughs> All right, we'll do the reload animation here. Sick, and then we'll go full auto. The thing I like about the FN foul is the recoil value. So we're about to go full auto here, right? You'll notice that the gun only starts to get unmanageable at the last couple rounds in the magazine. You can see like for an 80 to 90% of that magazine, you're able to stay dead on target. It's just the last five-ish bullets that really take you off target. Um, but yeah, once again, sick, sick weapon. I can't wait to use this in game. But there, of course, are two other goodies that the militia rifleman or uh, militia squad leader has now. So we're gonna go over here and pick up the new, brand new SKS with a PU sight. Now, some of you might recognize this PU sight from the Mosin in Tarkov. It's pretty much the exact same sight. Uh, it's the PU. It's got a 3.5, I believe, um, times optic. It's 3.5 or four times, and uh, it's. It's crystal clear.
You can tell that they also added a little bit more punch to this gun. As far as the sound. So, SKS, definitely going to be a squad leader favorite for the militia. And a cool thing that this has is, as you notice, there's a bayonet attached. And it replaces your knife. Now, I think they're going to increase the range of the bayonet. Because right now, it's just your standard knife range. And I'll show you what I mean. You can't really, even though the weapon clips through the target, it doesn't really connect. You have to get within normal rif um, knife range. Which I hope they fix. I hope they give you some extra reach with the bayonet. Because it really does... It really does need that to make it like a bayonet, a proper bayonet. Because you can thrust this thing pretty far. Uh, but really cool gun to use. It's it's a ton of fun. Like it's just, it really is. Let me shoot a couple more targets here just because I lo Just listen to the sound design on this. It's just so punchy. Uh, and then the last thing that the uh, militia squad leader gets, of course, is going to be where is it? the M4 with the red dot. This is brand new. It's an M4 with a red dot attached to the carry handle. It looks atrocious. It looks ugly. It looks like it shouldn't really happen, but it's a thing. Uh, this is the M4 that only has semi and burst. But, I mean, hey, you have a one-times optic now for when you want it. So, I like how the militia is getting more, uh, more toys. Can barely see the red dot sometimes though it's so small um all right uh they also changed the ak sounds so we're gonna shoot the ak here and you're gonna you're gonna listen to the sounds here ak sounds are much more punchy much more punchy all right Okay, so we're back with the Insurgent Heavy Anti-Tank Kit. As you notice, your primary weapon is going to be a TT-33. Uh, you have a pistol. This is the first time we're seeing a pistol as a primary in squad. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like they should at least get, like, an SKS or something or an AKS because, like, a TT-33 uh, is, like, is nothing. Um, but, yeah, the cool thing is that they do have... A RPG 29, which is a brand new RPG to uh, to squad, and as you can see, you have that new heavy anti tank round. This thing zeroes to 400, so we're gonna try to hit 400 on the mark. Ugh, I hate these sights. Landed a little short, um, but yeah, this is the new heavy anti tank weapon. So the last thing we have to show off uh, after this is uh, Talil outskirts. Whoops. Bring it down to 100. And it connects. So, cool new RPG. Um, yeah, it's it's this thing is massive. Um, but yeah, it's cool to have. I don't know how I feel about the, having the pistol as your primary. But I guess we'll see how that works. And I'm trying to think now if we're li leaving out anything from V12. I don't think we are. So we're going to go ahead and roll it to Talil. And... Uh, yeah, we'll uh, show you that map. All right, so I decided to cut this video short here simply because the map flyover portion even edited down was another 30 minutes and I didn't really want to upload an hour long video because I know that would kind of be like an information overload for a lot of you. So that video is going up tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified of when that goes up and when the live streams are. And then just at the end here, I got to plug it. Uh, a couple things to mention. We do now have that Twitch sub button. So head over to twitch.tv and check us out if you'd like to support patreon.com slash karmica as well. If you'd like to pick up a karmica two by three patch or send it key tag. And then finally, our new merch designs are live. Check them out in the description down below or the, at the merch shelf, which is below the video, below the description. That'll take you directly to teesprings.com slash store slash karma cuts. A ton of new designs as well as a tank t-shirt design, which is cool, especially with V12 dropping soon. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, guys. This was a whole encompassing V12 uh, update as far as mechanics. And then the map will be going up tomorrow. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.